Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Doing's Corner. I remain your host, Nancy, and I'm here with Doing herself. How are you doing? I'm fine. I'm You're still fine. fine. <laughs> I was fine before I went on the break. I'm still fine, fine. now. <laughs> All right, let's go right into our next conversation, right? Okay, so there was this recent interview that was done online by one of your housemates, right? Where... It seems like whether that shade did it shade or not, you know when they mm. say if you want to speak to me, speak to me directly. You know they go call one thousand people, two thousand people. No, so can you shed a little more light on that for us? I assume you're speaking about CC. Mm -hmm. I'm not really in the business of like talking. If I want to say something, I'll call your name, right? I mean, I had the podcast mm -hmm. thing, and it was very, very um, heartbreaking for me because it doesn't matter if we're not speaking now. You know, mm -hmm. I considered her a friend at some point, mm -hmm. you get. First of all, I don't know the reason she did it. I don't know the reason she said everything she said. I think that it is, it, that interview was a trap. Mm. When I say a trap, what I mean is this. So, you know, we, we had a job together, right? And, you know, I kind of fell out a little bit with, there's a lot of story. But I know that they're, they're trying to promote the, job that we went for and they're thinking of maybe using the feud you know like when there's a fight mm. so it's sometimes they're trying to use that controversy so i think that interview was just to trigger me they know that you know if they say something i don't like to trigger mm -hmm. me then i'll say something then they will start releasing things about the job and then it'll become a whole thing a lot of the things she said were false mm. and it was just very unfortunate that a lot of people did not even wait to hear my side they just you know some people just judged and what I would just say is this, I would never, ever stop anybody's bag. What had happened was, you know, the last week while she was in the house, somebody had reached out to me and said they wanted, it was a club, that they wanted to host um, CC and I, right? And that was the same week that she had said I was a fake friend and all of that. Prior to that, you know, I was rooting for her. I was mm -hmm. rooting for her and Ilebae at the time. But when I watched that, I was really hurt because I'm like, babe, like, I thought we're cool. Before I left the house, I gave you coins. I wrote you a really cute note. And the note was just me saying how beautiful you are. I believe in you. I think you can win this. You know, just stuff like that. So how am I a fake friend? You know, I was really hurt. So when that call came in, what I said to the person was, honestly, this is not my favorite person to talk about right now. The person was trying to tell me that immediately she gets out of the house, I should please talk to her mm -hmm. that, you know, he would like to have us both. And then I should ask for our rates and all that. So I was like, if you want to work with CC, reach you out to CC on your own. Self. Yes. Talk to me about me. Then he was like, okay, what about, what if he's um, Ilebae? Would I be able to speak to Ilebae? I was like, maybe that would be easier to speak to Ilebae, but I would still prefer if you reach out to Ilebae on your own and talk to me about me. That right now, I don't want to talk to CC. I just... I don't want to do that right now. That's what I said to him. Mm -hmm. And eventually he just decided, he didn't even talk about it again. And that was it. And the thing just went like that. So mm -hmm. it wasn't a case of, I said, oh, I don't want to, maybe the way, I don't know if it was the way I said, because if I really went and stopped your bag, I'm not a fool. I'm not going to come and say to you that, oh yeah, I went and stopped your bag. Do you understand? I was telling her, like, well, I was trying to explain to her that you really, really hurt me. Like saying that, you know, I'm a fake friend, da, da, da. how I really genuinely liked you. So I don't know how she interpreted it, but you know, I just think this is a but I feel, I feel uh, this is what I always say mm. most times, and I tell people, your celebrities, your influencers, they're humans. They have hearts. They have blood running through them. So in my head, relate this scenario mm. to your everyday friendship. You guys are not in the limelight. Right. Both of you just had a fight now. Mm. And a gig comes. Let's be honest with ourselves. Nobody is going to be in that mood. I'm going mood. to be ecstatic to say, yeah, jig it. And I didn't even say, don't work with her. I said, just reach out to her on your own. I don't want to communicate with her now. Talk to me about me. That's all I said. What I'll just say to just wrap up this whole thing, because I don't want to give you too much attention. I'll just say, sis is a really sweet girl, but she mm -hmm. sometimes gets in her head. She makes up things in her head, and it makes so much sense to her. And to her, you know, she's so right. But sometimes, you know, you have my number. Even if you heard this, even if the person that we went to work for was telling you I was asking for how much you were paid, you could have called me to ask me. That's not even what happened. When, when I fell out with this person, of course, he would tell you certain things about me. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't just believe that, you know, straight off the bat. And she made it seem like as if we fought or we stopped talking or she cut me off because of the job. That wasn't even what happened. 
We stopped talking because she was bringing up certain things that happened. We already spoke about in the house. She was trying to talk to me about, you know, after we had finished the job, mm -hmm. she was trying to talk to me about how I'm not a good friend. And I'm like, why am I not a good friend? She said, I chose, you know, this person over her in the house. There are times that she'll be telling me about this person. I'll be supporting that person. I will not support her. And she, I will tell her I'm fighting with this person today. Tomorrow she'll see me smiling. I was just sick of it. I was like, first of all, you can't just tell me you don't like this person and I fight this person because you don't. I'm not in kindergarten. I'm sorry. It doesn't work like that. I'm fighting with this person. So my best yeah. friend has to fight with it's, that it person. It doesn't work like that. So I was just trying to, I just got tired of it. And I'm like, we spoke about this in the house already. Mm -hmm. I explained it to you already. Why are you bringing it up again? So if we, if we talk about it now, you still bring it up again and say, I'm not a good friend another time again. I was just sick of it. So I didn't speak to her again after mm -hmm. then. And we didn't speak at all until her birthday. And I wished her a happy birthday. I even sent her a text on her birthday to just say, happy birthday, da, 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 just for her that it's not that deep, she gets. So when I saw the interview, I was really shocked. And I just sent her a text. I was like, why? I will never do you like this. I was like, why? And I just blocked her after because I was really hurt. But it is what it is. I just think she misunderstood the whole thing. Situation. And, yeah. And all. All right. Okay. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, this part of you being in the limelight, <laughs> it happened. Tell me, have you been able to handle the pressure of being in the limelight? It's not easy. I'm telling you for a fact, it's not easy. There are times that, you know, when you're in the limelight, people expect you to be a perfect person, a robot. You don't mm -hmm. make any mistakes. Everything you do is intentional. Everything. I was speaking to somebody and the person was like, oh, why did you do this thing? I was like, see, I just did it out of confusion. I didn't even know what I was doing. Like, it happened, I reacted, I didn't think. The person was like, doing the lie, you're not the most, you're not a confused person. I'm probably the most confused person you will ever meet. I'm always like, oh, should I do this? Should I not do this? So sometimes people expect I'm just going to say perfection. this. I, I'm, I'm just going to concur with that because I've had to work with the way as she would call and always say, Thank Nancy, you. What, what do you think? Yeah, you think? I always what say, think? like, what do you think? What do you, I'm always very... It's always difficult for me to make decisions. So sometimes I make this decision, then I go back on it. And so sometimes people just expect, you know, perfection. And especially, I think with me, you know what I think? I think people give me too much credit for my brain. <laughs> <laughs> I think so, because people expect that if Doin does this thing, she has thought about it. She has, She's very calculated. Girl, I'm She's just like you. I've been making mistakes every other time. Yes. You people should please have mercy. Not everything is... I'm not a professor that's just sat down and just, oh, this is the but way. But you know you have this that look. The... You have that look like, if I have done this, 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 I'm mm. going to give you my resting B face. And I'm <laughs> going to be like, yeah, I just did it. I blame God for giving me that look. <laughs> because I'm just, I don't even be knowing what I'm doing half the time. I just be doing stuff. And then people just make up one and I'm just like, wow. <laughs> like, I wish I was this smart. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> I am smart, but because like, I, I please, can't see guys, I'm, coming out. I'm, I'm not sure. Einstein. I know I might look like Einstein, but I'm not really Einstein, I promise you. Like, it's very tiring sometimes. <laughs> sometimes I'm like, okay, can't these people just think I'm dumb? So they will just cut me some slack. <laughs> I'm not telling you. Say. Yeah, it's not everything that's so thought out and planned. They're mm -hmm. like, oh, she went to go and do this because I'm just like, girl, <sighs> rest. So it's just that. Like, they expect perfection. They expect you not to make mistakes. And it's not a realistic expectation to place on anybody. That's too much. Yeah, it's too a much lot. Burden on your shoulders. And it's so scary for me because if I want to do something, just before I came in here, I wanted to repost you know, a friend's, um, I would even say, I wanted to repost Fina's podcasting. I'm happy mm -hmm. that she's going into it. I'm happy for, the sky is big enough for all of us to do the mm -hmm. same thing and win. Everybody will have their audience. But I was scared to repost it because they'll say, mm, she's reposting it though because she's trying to be friends with this one. So that because she's fighting with this one. She's, and really, that's not even how I think. I just wanted to, because she came on my show. I mm -hmm. wanted to show support that's to her right. and just repost. I just... People should just please let me be able to be myself and do the things I want to do out of the kindness of my heart without reading extra meaning to it, it and trying to like, you know, make it into something that is not. So I think that's like the most painful part. How do you handle when fans decide to pay you against somebody and really there's nothing, there's really nothing deep, but I never go under the bridge like that. Me, whenever fans try to, except it's somebody that I actually have issues with. Mm -hmm. If it's somebody I don't have issues with, I just call the person straight. Don't listen to all these things though. Like... So many times, like, Baya and I were cool. I'll see some things, and I'm like, girl, I hope you're not listening to this. This is not like this, so, so just let them talk. You know, you can't correct every, you know, perception that is out there. So me, what I do is I just call my friend, and I tell my friend, 
I know you're seeing this thing online. That's not how it is. But if it's somebody that I actually have issues with, then I just let it be and just let them cook whatever they want, they want to, cook. to cook. What do you value the most, do you? Hmm. I value relationships. Unfortunately, people try to make it seem like it's such a bad thing, but I really like relationships. I like friendships. I like relationships. I like humanity in general. I like love. I like loyal people. Mm -hmm. I like family. I'm just maybe because of the kind of family I grew up in. We're so close. Like, I tell my mom, I love you, mommy. My nieces come and say, I love you. If, if I fight with my sister, she calls me, okay, come, let's talk about it. That's how... That's what I'm used to. All my friends before, like Big Brother, they're so used to that. Like, if we have any issues, I just say, oh, yeah, let's talk about this thing. Because I know that it's so possible for you to misunderstand, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of stuff along the line. But I guess it's not acceptable these days. But, yeah, I value love, friendships, relationships, humanity in general. Yeah. Has the limelight affected your love life? Mm. I think he's, he's made it a lot more complicated, I would say, <laughs> because if someone is talking to me, I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared to text because I'm like, what if they screenshot this text and turn it into so? I'm so scared. But the thing is this. I have tried to not, like, interfere with anybody in the media space, in this entertainment industry. I don't think I would ever date anybody in the industry. Mm. I've always been a corporate girl. Like, every boyfriend I've had, the, from the corporate world because I just feel like I can learn from them and they can also like help me so I've just talked to that the people I talk to are people I've known before the show mm -hmm. the person I'm currently talking to I've known him for like I think 10 years plus is awesome he's mm -hmm. awesome he's like a great support system when you are insulting me online it's like girl I know who you are I love you so much and you are good <laughs> don't listen to them so I just stick to my people that's it and I just try not to meet new people because I'm scared. Yeah. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, she's scared. She doesn't really want to go there. And um, what about your extended family? How have they been to you since limelight? Because <sighs> from what you've said, your nuclear family, your close family, your brother, your sister, your mom, they've been very supportive, right? Yeah. But there is also the extended family. Now I'm going to mm. give you a case on point. Of recent, um, Mikael, we came to talk about how his family members have drained him. The moment right. he went into playing for all the big clubs and top clubs, it was, brother, brother, mm. his sisters got married, and the guys that got married to his sisters were like, since you're making a lot of bees, right. sister, we can collect money. They give birth to a lot of kids, and they expect him to train. Is that the same for you? I think I'm lucky. I don't really have that experience. I come from a family where, you know, everybody's doing well. Yeah. Thank God for that. So apart from like, I think the only people that disturb me are my younger brothers and my younger cousins. Apart from those people, there's nobody that has any unnecessary like expectation or is like unnecessarily entitled to, oh, mm -hmm. my money. I say, oh, do this for us. No, nah, I don't really experience that with my family. They're actually Your extended quite, family. My extended family, family yeah. Well. They're actually quite supportive. Like my auntie, she saw the vibrator interview. She's like, ha, huh, doing, you know, Nigerians don't really like, because she's in the US. <laughs> she's like, over here, you can have that type of conversation, conversation but, but not here in Nigeria. Yeah, but we just laughed it over, and I'm like, Auntie, I'm, they're really stressing me out, and she's like, no, just ignore it. Like, yeah. My extended family, they're very supportive. They understand me. They know who I am, and yeah, nobody has stressed me out. Nobody has stressed me out. Mm -mm. All right. How do you define your success and happiness for you? Hmm. Happiness. Success for me is growth. Mm -hmm. Am I better than where I was yesterday? Do mm -hmm. I have more money than I had yesterday? Am I generating more revenue, more income? Have I been able to build a better network than I had yesterday? So mm -hmm. for me, that's success. I understand that success is always going to be a journey. I would never get to the point where I'm like, oh, I'm now fully successful. So for me, I just look at it as, okay, growth. And happiness for me is to have my love life balanced, mm. my career life balanced, my family balanced, my health balanced. If I have all those four, I'm good. You're happy. I'm happy. That's great. I totally understand you. Work, love life, your career, everything just has to be balanced. Yeah. If any one of them has issues, yeah. you don't have peace of mind. I'm telling you. It's going to really affect you. It has a way because at the end of the day, it's your life. Everything is intertwined. If one part of your life is having issues, it's, you see the ripple effect on the other part of your life. So yeah, I totally, totally understand you on that. Is that one thing about yourself physically or 
physically or there's a there's a trait or a habit that you have that you would like to change? I think I'm a very reactive person. I react in the moment. If you give me, I give you. If back. you give me, I give you. That's something <laughs> God, I'm really I'm even praying about it at this point. So what I do now is when something happens, that's what they're teaching me. I sit for like 20 <laughs> seconds and I just count 20 to one in my head and I'm like, okay. There's a high chance that the way you want to react is the wrong way to react. So just hold on. So I think if I could change that, I, I would have a lot more delayed response, a reaction to stuff. Because that way I can think through it properly and, you know, react properly and not regret, you know, my reaction. So, yeah, I think that's what I would change. But don't you think that's your personality? If you just, that's just who you are. I feel some, sometimes, right, if you were born this way, it's just how... I feel it's just how you're supposed to cope with certain things, right? Yeah, but I believe that even if you're born that way, it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean it's right. It doesn't mean you're perfect. You can still, like, work on how you were born. And, you but know, then your reaction is based on what this person... So if somebody comes and be like, oh, my God, obviously you're not a mad person that mm -hmm. will say, we're in here, <laughs> what's wrong with you? But yeah. if somebody comes with, hello, it's just, it's nature. Mm. Yes, I know, but there are times that even if somebody comes with, are you crazy, are you mad? Are you crazy, are you mad? Is not the right response. Sometimes the better sure? response is to keep quiet and make them feel stupid. Are you because sure? Are really... you crazy? Are you crazy? It's not supposed to be like, but not the No. Sometimes, sometimes, yes. I'm all for violence when it's needed, chicken, when it's necessary. But sometimes silence is very powerful. I'm learning that. Mm. Sometimes there are people that don't even deserve your reaction. Do you? We try silence in this country. Well, don't find it. No, it's, it's not, true. You know, they work. Sick. But it's not about the environment, though. It's just a personal thing for me. I don't even care if it doesn't work in this area, in this region or whatever. It's just something I want to be able to, you know, keep quiet in situations and walk away from certain situations. Situations. Okay, I wish you all the best in it. And I Thank hope you. Nigeria is going to help you. And I hope Nigerians hey. are going to help you. Amen. We just pray to work. Because me, I, really, I, I know the country I'm from. I know the people that are Nigerians like me. Not everybody has the grace to calm down and, right. and react. There are times where you can actually keep quiet. And I feel like keeping quiet even de depends on who is the person coming to show the grace. If it's somebody that, hello, what's your problem? <laughs> I would give it to you. But if it's somebody right. I really care, respect, I would, I, would, I would take the time to calm down and think of my response but i'm sorry if i don't know you from adam mm -hmm. i don't owe you don't owe me i don't owe you anything if you come with aggression it's except jesus just spoke to me two seconds ago <laughs> that's when you won't give it back I won't even give me back. because i'm not the one or the two if you come to me funny <laughs> you'll be really shocked that's the thing you'll be really shocked. but i'm learning i'm learning guys. you're learning to become i'm a work in progress this is working yeah in progress. what's I'm your biggest on. strength my biggest strength I'm very forgiving. Ah. I would say it's a strength. I don't, know, I don't know how to hold grudges. And that's why sometimes people think I'm fake. But the truth is, all I need to forgive somebody is to see genuine remorse. Mm. If I feel like you're sorry, I understand because I make a lot of mistakes. So I actually understand that sometimes, you know, mm -hmm. it's not intended to, you know, really come out that way. Sometimes a mistake. So I let things go quite easily. And do I you forget my... easily? Because there's forgiveness and there's forgetting. I don't, I wouldn't say that I forget. There would always be that in the back of my mind that this person has done it before, they can do it again. But I would still move with love. I would still open myself up to you and just hope. And sometimes it's even stupid. Because sometimes my mom says, you know, hey, I know you are forgiving, but you still have to be cautious and stuff like that. But I'm not really in control of it. Like, I'm just like, oh, I've forgotten. Sometimes I even remind myself, oh, well, you're the best, so oh don't forget God. to be angry with this person, that type of thing. But I'll say that's my biggest trend. So you forgive easily? I forgive very easily. You forgive easily? Yes. What's that one thing that somebody would do to you right now that don't, you can't forgive? <sighs> oh, mom, maybe if you kill my family member. That's the only thing I can think of. What's that significant moment in your life that shaped you to the doing that you're sitting here right now? I'll say the death of my dad. Hmm. That's like the biggest blow life has given me. Hmm. You know, when I was young, I used to think that, oh, nothing bad can happen to us in my family. <laughs> I want to cry. Okay, calm down. I don't think I'll ever get it where it is. I love that man so much. We're so tight. And the fact that 
God just took him without any explanation, nothing. I couldn't, I couldn't reconcile that. I couldn't reconcile God loving me and doing that. And, but I'm, I won't say I'm happy it happened, but I would say it shaped me because I became very strong. I had to be, because my mom is very emotional, my sister is very, I had to be that one that would say, okay, you know what, now this has happened, okay, let's move, let's move on. Okay, so his finances, like his money that he left behind, what's the plan? Are we making? Are we gonna just leave it there for some people to just come and take it, or are we gonna, or are we gonna be crying and until they take everything? Are we gonna sit up and actually monitor his stuff? So I had to be the one to say, okay, you know what? Let's let's figure out how to move forward now. So every time in my life that I've you know encountered any stumbling stumbling block, I have had that same reaction to it. To the it. same way I reacted to my dad's death and just That's okay, how. let's keep moving. That's how I've reacted to everything in my life. So I'd say that really shaped me. Yeah. Thank you. I'm not a crybaby. <laughs> <laughs> How do you handle challenges and setbacks in your life? First, I cry. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I'm not going to lie, right? Uh, I'm not going to lie. Crying is very It helps. Medicinal. It's very therapeutic. Very. People don't know. First, I cry. Then I call my mom and I rant. I just go on a rant and then I start thinking, what's the way forward after then? So I... I'm, I'm a very it is what it is type of person. I don't believe that. I think since I lost my dad, I just believe that life doesn't owe me anything. Mm. So whenever I have any setback, whatever, I'm just like, okay, girl, you are not the pit, you are not the sorriest case in the world. Like the people going through worse. You can't be too entitled to say everything must happen, you know, perfectly. And mm -hmm. who are you? Even Jesus Christ did not have his entire journey smooth while he was on earth. So. I just have that at the back of my mind, and I'm like, okay, so how do we overcome this? How do we move forward? What's the next, you know, next step? And that's just how I deal with it. Mm. All right. What's that one issue that you've had to face that was, you know when they say you were between a, a wall and, what's the phrase? When you were like, your back was actually pushed to the wall. What's that? Has that ever happened to you? And how did you get out of it? Mm, and I felt like there was no way out. Yes. I was still take it back to my dad's death. Because before he died, he was my everything. Like, that was you were my really that dad. Close, We're very close, close to I, didn't, I wasn't close with my mom at all. Wow. <laughs> my dad would, and oh God, he, he was very blessed, like, you know, financially. So anything I want, he would get my dad you. would get it for me. Anything, like, anything. Anything. He didn't even, he never looked at it like, oh, I'm spoiling her or anything. So when he died, I felt like my entire life was over. I felt like, okay, how do I move on? Like, how do I continue? How do I, I would say that that's the situation that, that's, that's the worst situation, situation I've ever, ever been, been in in my entire life. I don't pray that for anybody. A girl needs a father. I don't care how, you know, old she is. If, if that father figure is missing, it really changes a lot for you. And you just need it. You just need it. I hear you. If you're, if you're giving the opportunity to change one thing in the world, what would that be? I'll take it with death. I don't like death. In general, I just think, I wish there was a way we could just like tell our loved ones, okay, we'll see you later. I just think nobody should die. I don't, it doesn't even matter like how bad a person is. I'm not even in support of like death penalty because of this type of thing. Like, yeah, yeah I, I, I'd rather you send somebody to jail for the rest of their life than kill somebody. Like, death is it's horrible. It's like this person is just no longer there. Like, no. you can't call the person, you can't reach yeah. out to the person. There's, and there's no other situation I can think about in this world that there's no remedy to, or there's no, no matter, even if it's poverty, so far you have life. There's still mm -hmm. a chance that, you know, tomorrow something can change. Mm -hmm. Do you get? But once the person is dead, there's nothing. Like, that's the end end. So, if I could change something, it will be that. And maybe one other thing. I think humanity has completely lost its touch. Mm. I think the first, the most important commandment that God gave to us is to love, love one another. And we've lost it. Now, love seems like a crime. It seems like something that is shady, something like, if you even show people love, they're like, hmm, so I want something. Do you get people? I not get even used to love anymore. I wish the world would just have much more love. And we'll just see that we can all coexist, we can all be happy, and nobody needs to be angry. Let's just be happy. So maybe love. So I want to ask you a question, right? And this is just giving your opinion as you are looking at people. Who do you think, out of 
the big brother set is the fakest of them all. <laughs> <laughs> the fakest of them all? Yeah. <laughs> yes, the fakest of them all. I'm the not even gonna lie, I have a name in my head, but I'm not gonna say that name. <laughs> Why? You gotta I'm say not gonna say name. that name. I'm not Just gonna have say to that say. name. Based on character, based on everything that you've seen, who is the person? There's somebody I think in my head, but you know why I can't mention their name? Because I wouldn't like if someone did that to me. Because I feel like I don't know them well enough to be sure that they're actually fake. And that's why I said, based on what they've offered, so this is where people need to understand stuff, right? And that's why I'm clearly saying this. Based on what they've offered you, mm. based on what you have seen, comments, everything, based on the research. So this is like doing a research, mm. right? When you do a research, is what you know, you do a conclusion of. We all did projects. <laughs> Chapter two was research, right? Based you on research. You like violence. Based Nancy. on everything that has, the information that has been given to you. Now no, you no, that no. did not call you fake, it's left for you to pick. Do you want to change that narrative or you want to give the person access to? I that know is your person. choice. Is that parrot in the house? That parrot is fake. Other people will talk. That parrot will not play their talk. That parrot will play only my own. I make it like as if I'm the only one that is talking in the house. That parrot, I have a very but that parrot, that parrot is fake. So whoever is behind that parrot, whoever was putting the disc and playing the voice notes, that person is the fakest. That's my answer. <laughs> Shout out to the parrot. Shout, Shout out, out to, to the parrot. parrot. I love you, parrot twenty. <laughs> No, that parrot cost a lot I'm of I'm telling like, you. It costs a lot And of as soon as I left the house, the parrot stopped talking no. I say, God, why me? <laughs> why you? <laughs> All right, so like doing quickly, what, what's, what do you want to tell your fans? But before you answer that question, let's visit this fandom situation. Mm. So we see everybody doing... Oh, my fans got me this. My fans got me that. My mm. fans got this. My fans got that. But we, they're not the fans. <laughs> Viewers at home. And we're not sitting there and we're saying, she is this same economy. That fuel is 600 and something. She is this same economy. That exchange rate now is at 1,000 and something. That these fans, who are these same so-called fans? Now you are there. You mm. have fans. Are they saying things that your fans have got you mm -hmm. that you can proudly see? Or there are things that you got for yourself. You know, it's going to say, it's ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> it's my fans that got me. See, what I'll say is this. People need to understand that fans, when people say fans, they, they automatically imagine that fans are broke people that have nothing to do with their life apart from watching Big Brother. And yeah, they don't have a lot of money, but they're still putting their two cents. No, there's some fans that, there's some people that have watched you from that show. They like your personality. And they are actually really, really well to do. There is a fan. A fan can tell you, you know what? I'll send five million naira. I'll send two million naira to this person. That's how much I love this person. So let's not look at fans as people that are, people that oh, in this economy, you have not even uh, you don't even have a car. You're buying a car for this person. You don't have house. Some fans are actually really, really rich, rich. So I don't think that thing is fake at all. I think fans, you underestimate the power of loving somebody. When you love somebody, and especially reality TV, when you feel like I you've still don't watched, understand it, right? it's, I, I swear, understand it's understandable. It. When you feel like you've watched somebody on TV, you've seen them cry, you've seen them laugh, you, you almost feel like you are invested in their journey. You want to see them do so well. You want to, so you're like, how can I contribute to this? And sometimes some people have a very big fan. If, imagine having, if you have like 3,000, 5,000 people that are dropping 5,000 5, naira, can you calculate how much that is? Yeah, no. That's a lot of money. That's, yes, and that's, I a, know. that's, if you now have maybe some rich fans that are not able to drop, okay, one million here, two million here, that's a lot of money. People should not be looking down on fans. Who, they are really, they really be doing these things. I don't know that. I don't know. Maybe there are people that would have done certain things themselves. I mean, it's social media now. People, they yes, always because be we'll see, stuff. we'll see, oh my God, he surprised <laughs> me. But later on, you hear just that now she surprised herself. Yeah, I've heard stuff like that. I don't personally know, honestly. I don't, I don't personally know anybody that has lied about that type of stuff or has bought something themselves and said the fans bought it. I don't know anybody. Everybody that I know personally, when I say personally, not just from being in the house with them, everybody that I know and we really, really speak, mm -hmm. and they've given them something. And of course, they are more, is this thing true? Most times it's actually true. So maybe the people that fake it, I don't know anybody that's faked it, but I think it's true. So the house that CC got me said is real? I don't know, to be honest. I don't know. Because we weren't really speaking at the time. So it wasn't like I was able to call her. But I don't see the motive to lie. 
I don't know. I don't see. I don't see that. Well, ladies and right, gentlemen, I don't know. Maybe I should go and get fans because these fans go watch on, show. See, watch show and the next go you love somebody and I just jump, jump into go on, big brother. And you're already light skinned. Half of my jeans, should we go? You will be my fans. You will be. <laughs> See, fans really do. When I, when I came out of Level Up, my fans yeah. got, like, podcast stuff. It's just that I couldn't use some of them. It was yeah. expensive. Like, all, everything you need for a podcast, like, they bought. And that was amongst other things that they bought. This time around, they furnished my entire kitchen. Like, every, because I don't cook. So, like, everything you can think of. Like, so fans actually, like, do these things. Hmm. Yes, they do. Nice. Maybe we're very like, grateful. Maybe we can start. I just think sometimes some of us should give back to our fans too. That's the yeah. Problem. I really think so because these people, you know, go hard for us, even if it's not even financially. Sometimes even with their like the way they text and fight. Sometimes yeah, you know, not every time people, collect, though. collect, collect. Sometimes say, you know what, my fans. So yeah, let me take you people out. So yeah, who needs money here? You know, I have my fans reach out to me like via DM to ask for like stuff. The ones I can help, I actually help, and I just, you know, just to give back to them too. So I just think we should give back also. That's, that's, I will, I'm a firm believer of uh, give and receive. Yeah. Like, you have to be a giver. Like, Absolutely. one of my close friends will always say, men are natural givers, which I always disagree with him. I don't feel like it's a gender thing. Both genders are yeah. givers. Yeah. They are givers. But yeah. so, doing quickly before we wrap this up, what's the last word you have to say to your fans? Okay, um, they're called delight. I love you people so much. You have no idea. I think one thing I crave more than anything is people just understanding me because I'm seriously misunderstood. Mm -hmm. And, you know, these people, they don't know me from anywhere, but they just understand me. And, you know, they've just chosen to, you know, love me mm -hmm. in spite of my flaws. And I don't, take that, I don't take that for granted at all. I'm super grateful. I hope that I can keep making you proud. And, you know, if there's any way I can support any of you too, I'm very happy to. And thank you, guys. Thank you for the love. And to the trolls. Get out. <laughs> no, no, no. In the words of Nicki Minaj, Nicki Minaj was like, and to my haters. <laughs> I just want to thank you all for downloading my song and listening to it. Y'all making me happy. I'm telling you, sometimes they will troll me. I'm like, oh my God, this is a very creative troll. Some of these trolls, they don't even understand how creative they are. I said, I'm going to put mm -hmm. it into something much more, you know, rewarding. Some of them are actually really funny and really smart people. Like, mm -hmm. they're good with like graphic stuff. Like, they can help you re edit your face to look like you know something else put that shit into like something rewarding and make money out of it instead of trolling me because you can't stop the grace of god upon my life that's mm -mm. just period so all right ladies and gentlemen thank you so much doing it was a pleasure for me to actually interview you on your show you. uh, from everything i've i've gotten to just work with doing for like a few weeks right and I feel like every of your personality you have mentioned, I can relate to it. Now, like I said, research, information that I have gotten is what I'm giving to you people on this. You should not start saying, if I don't think care what people want to say, but ladies and gentlemen, Doin's Corner is officially opened and she's going to be taking over from here. Thank you so much for staying tuned, guys. We love you. And yeah, have a lovely evening. Bye, guys.